very good morning to you, Grenada, and the rest of the world. I'm George Grant, saying hey, thanks a lot for joining us for today's edition of Good Day Grenada. It is Wednesday, the 17th day of January. Yes, sirree. Two weeks gone, three almost completed. Nice of you to join us this morning. We're going to do... Uh, a lot of the usual, but we do have something really neat that we want to show to you. And uh, I hope it will give you a good feeling about Grenada and, uh, you know, how the world is starting to, to look at us. Believe it or not, despite all the hassles, some great things happening. Um, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, let's take a look at this morning's rundown see that you folks are already out there on facebook and uh they're also out there on the other platforms as well they have been for a little while in anticipation this morning we'll start with uh depending on how you look at it some sad news um in a way i'm also happy i have to report to you this morning that uh one of my past teachers Brother Matthias O'Sullivan, Presentation Brothers College, passed away in his sleep on uh, Tuesday. Sad because uh, Brother Matthias, I mean, I went to college, what, in the 1960s? And uh, even after I graduated and went away to live in Canada, uh, once I returned, I discovered that Brother Matthias was still around and we've always been friends ever since. Well, he's, he's been suffering a bit, and uh, he's now gone to be with the Lord. So we'll take a look at that in just a wee bit. I also have a heartwarming story for you. You know that Grenada is going all out to increase the number of people coming to stay here, um, you know, uh, at the hotels on, on their vacations. Heartwarming story this morning. Um, you'll see where somebody who has done a really good deed out there in California has been rewarded with a four-day stay at one of our hotels. Huh? Tell you that story in just a wee bit. I'm also going to bring you uh, your holiday guide for 2019. What holidays do we have this year? Could you just name them? I doubt it. We also have the national report for you. And, of course, since I have not heard anything to the contrary, I do expect that Mr. Bajinsky is all ponied up <laughs> and is going to be joining us um, eh, around the bottom of the hour. Okay? So, let's begin with Brother Matthias. Presentation Brothers College, the Alumni Association in Canada, New York, and Grenada. The Board of Man or I should say Associations, the Board of Management of the College in Grenada, the staff, the students of PBC, their own morning, the passing of Brother Matthias O'Sullivan and his sleep on Tuesday night. He was at the time in his native homeland, Ireland. Brother Matthias came to Grenada back in uh, 1953 and dedicated his entire life to the service of education at the Presentation Brothers College. He taught geography and English literature. I wasn't too crazy about the literature, but the geography, yeah. And religious studies, yeah. For over three decades. The development and success of Presentation College Sea Scouts over the years have been attributed to his active leadership and passion for scouting. He was a quiet servant of the poor and marginalized. His deep spirituality was always manifested in his humble and selfless concern for others. Brother Matthias impacted the lives of several generations of PBC students. He gave yeoman service to the growth and development of the Intercore Games, so popular these days. The patients in hospital, the inmates of Her Majesty's prison, 
will all miss his regular visits. I too will miss Brother Matthias. Indeed, he was one of my icon teachers at PBC back in the 60s and has been a friend since. I will long remember, as recently as late last year, seeing Brother Matthias scooting around the city of St. George on his familiar little scooter. Never went by without calling out to me. I was saddened when I learned that he was ill and hospitalized here in Grenada. Although I was never able to get out to visit him at the hospital, I was happy when I learned that some of his former students had arranged to have him sent back to his homeland. When I learned the news last night, I smiled, remembering the warmth and friendship which we've had over the many years. Rest in peace, Brother Matthias, and thank you for helping to shape my life. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, on Facebook, TF is there. <laughs> Family. Yeah, TF Richards is saying good morning to you guys, and uh, so is Margaret. Uh, Veronica Sandy as well. And uh, Veronica is sending her blessings as well. Okie doke. Uh, now, I have this heartwarming story that I want to share with you. Grenada is looking forward to welcoming a gentleman by the name of Dane Cummings. He's a fireman who came to the rescue of 93-year-old Margaret Newsom. Not, not Facebook Margaret, okay? Margaret Newsom. He will be staying at the Mount Cinnamon Resort in Grenada to enjoy some of what this country has to offer. This clip that I'm going to share with you tells the whole story. I told you about SideDeal.com, right? Well, it's a new week and we've got four new deals. Use that smartphone. All right, everybody. Uh, before we go, I want to tell you about a really heroic story. Last month, uh, last month, as the fires in Paradise, California burned, it forced thousands of residents out of their homes. Now, when 93-year-old Margaret needed help, it was her local waste management driver, Dane, that came to her rescue. He loaded her up in his truck and got her to safety. They're joining us live from Biggs, California. Please say hi to Dane and Margaret. Uh, Miss Margaret, how you doing, ma'am? We're doing great. Fine. Well, you're looking good. Miss Margaret, what do you remember from that day? Well, I remember turning the TV on and realizing that we were on fire. So it just happened my caregiver had gone home for a few minutes and was going to come right back. That was before the TV was turned on. So I tried to contact her. She said the police were closing off the highway. She could not come back and get me. So I thought I'd better get a few things together just in case she sneaks back. <laughs> that way I would get out of there. Because my neighbor had left in his motorhome, I thought that sucker is leaving me behind. Let me talk to Dane for a second. Dane, how did you know yes, sir. how did you know Miss Margaret needed help? Well, I didn't know she needed help. I thought she'd be out of there, and I thought her caretaker took her, but that was about the top of the hill. I went down to the bottom and started checking all my walk-in services, which are older people who can't take their cans to the streets, so I knew them were the people I was going to check first because they're older, and so I'd work my way up to her, and she was at about the top of my route. How I... could they be older? I'm 93. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> I mean, older, older people, you know what I mean? Not older than Margaret. Now I'm more older than Margaret. So I, I, get, I get up to her place, and she's out on the front porch. And so I stopped and asked her what she was doing. And she told me that her friend had left. And then she, I asked, is there some family we could call? And she said, no. And I said, well, you better get your stuff, and let's go. 
Man, Miss Margaret, how grateful are you that Dane was there that day? He's my guardian angel. Hey, Dane, uh, we think you're a hero for saving Miss Margaret, so we wanted to do something nice for you on the show, because the world needs more people like you, man. Listen to me, Dane. We're, uh, we're sending you on a four-night trip to Mount Cinnamon in Grenada. You're going to experience all-inclusive accommodations in an Ocean View suite, Cinnamon signature massages, an island tour, and tons of non-motorized water sports in this pure Grenada paradise. Dane, thanks for everything, and thank you, Miss Margaret. Look, if you know a hometown hero that ought to be recognized, I want to hear about them. Go to stevetv.com and tell me their story. That's going to do it for us today. We'll see y'all tomorrow, everybody. I told you, didn't I? That is heartwarming. That is heartwarming. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, okay, let's go into uh, our first commercial break, and then uh, we're going to come back with uh, yesterday's edition of the National Report right after this. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our Spicer. Redleck, energizing our Grenada. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. With free island-wide delivery, Hubbard's building supplies and lumber departments continue to provide the best quality lumber, steel, tiles, plumbing materials, electrical, and general hardware supplies at competitive prices. We continually consult with builders, homeowners, and contractors to improve product range and services. Enjoy discounts where applicable, including the use of credit and debit cards. At Hubbard's Building Supplies, Grand Dance, and Lumber Department, Caronage, we offer quality service, affordable prices, giving you the convenient, reliable free island-wide delivery call 440-2087 for all your home improvement and building solutions Government provides clarity on public officers eligible for salary increase. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for today, Wednesday, January 16th, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Government is providing clarity on the categories of public officers who are eligible to receive the 4% salary increase which goes into effect this month. The salary increase applies to established officers holding letters of appointment issued by the Public Service Commission, unestablished workers holding open-ended letters of appointment issued by the respective permanent secretaries as well as daily paid workers. Persons holding fixed term contracts are not eligible for the salary increase. It was announced this week that the 4% salary increase is the third and final portion of a 10% increase agreed to with trade unions representing the workers. Increases of 3% have already been paid to public officers for each of the two preceding years, 2017 and 2018. 
Government will spend more than $6 million on the salary increases alone. Those who continue to assist escaped prisoner Hayden Phillip to evade law enforcement, be warned the Royal Grenada Police Force will be coming after you. That warning from Inspector Desmond Richard, officer in charge of the Community Relations Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force. During a press conference on Wednesday, Inspector Richard said the force is investigating the reports that Philip has been assisted by certain individuals who will face the full force of the law on completion of their investigations. Let it be known that Hayden will be recaptured. And we're also going after those who we believe is assisting in his continued escape. The Royal Grenade Police Force is letting those persons know that they will be caught too, and they will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. So we want to advise persons out there. Hayden is a dangerous prisoner, and he must be approached with caution if it cannot be avoided. Inspector Richard says they are pulling resources from every department of the force to ensure that all is done to recapture the prisoner and to ensure the safety of the public. Uh, part of our efforts is to ensure that all the stations in, throughout Grenada is allotted and they are to on the lookout and, and persons on standby just in case information reaching any police station. Okay, you can call any police station, nearest one, that he might be sighted somewhere that we can move on any moment's notice. We really don't want him to be out there and then committing other crimes. Yeah, and, and people are feeling unsafe. Our duty, as you know, is to ensure uh, public safety. And um, we, will do, we will do what it takes, according to the law, to ensure that the public remain safe. He says since Philip keeps moving from one point to the next, it is important that the public is aware of what he looks like. He adds that communities must complement the efforts of the police to fight crime. Now, when criminals realize that a community stands up, they tend to shift their, their, their operations to some way they think is weaker. But if that person, that, that community builds up as well, then you see the, you see the you see? So that now, and they, they know. So it, it limits the, the, the width or the, the, the extent to which crime will be and can be committed. And that's why it is dangerous to just look at the police only to keep the country safe and to do uh, uh, all the work. In fact, we still depend on the public. We are not there when things are happening. And if the public don't assist, we will just come to a halt. We still depend on the public. Anyone with information on escape to prisoner Hayden Phillip is urged to call 440-3999 or police emergency 911 or the Criminal Investigation Department CID at 440-3921, or Her Majesty's Prison at 440-7038. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. We are back with you to continue the work. We need you to improve our Grenada, Karku, and P.T. Martin. On the road to national sustainable development. We're back. So how can we invest more in this sporting arena to bridge that gap for all the young people? I think uh, there should be more forums like this. We need to find a way in which to combat that now. Be a part of the next National Sustainable Development Plan 2035 Contributors Forum at the McDonald College St. Patrick. January 21st from 7 p.m. Welcome back. The government of China continues to invest in Grenada's educational development. On Tuesday, more than 70 Lenovo computers worth EC $210,000 were handed over to eight secondary schools during a presentation ceremony at the Anglican High School in St. George. We'll get more details from Annette Moore. I'm so delighted that we can provide some computers to, the, to improve the school's infrastructure to, of Grenada to continue our strong spot to the education course in Grenada. To date, Mr. Yang Shijian noted that 1,884 Grenadians, 1.7% 1 of the total population of Grenada, have been awarded scholarships and training program opportunities by the People's Republic of China. Up to now, China has provided more than 66 million US dollars to help develop Grenada 
education. These computers would greatly assist in furthering the ministry's ICT in education initiative. For this, we are deeply appreciative of this generous contribution of the government and people of the People's Republic of China. The computers were presented to schools in the various parishes. Schools receiving computers were the Anglican High School in St. George, the Grenada Christian Academy in St. Andrew, the St. Mark's Secondary School, the St. John's Christian Secondary School, the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School in St. Patrick, Bishop's College and Hillsborough Secondary Schools in Karakou, and the Westerhall Secondary School in St. David. As we transition to using learning management systems, education management information systems, open education resources, and e-testing platforms, schools need adequate technological tools. And as such, this morning's handover is a particularly welcoming one for us. Honorable Peter David, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Labor, urged recipients to care for the computers and further thanked the People's Republic of China for their continued cooperation and assistance. I want to say to the students, show appreciation for the equipment and to use the equipment to ensure your own development. To express to you, Minister our Councillor Yang, and to the People's Republic of China, our deepest appreciation not only for these computers, but for all that is being done with the people of Grenada in your cooperation with us for mutual development. This is another important action by the Chinese government and people to render selfless assistance to Grenada. The five ministers of government present at the function included the Honorable Pamela Moses, Honorable Kate Lewis, and Honorable Alvin Dabrio. For the National Report, I'm Annette Moore. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell is of the view that the archaic structure of the West Indies Cricket Board is hampering player performance and the overall development of the sport in the region. Dr. Mitchell shared the view Tuesday evening, appearing as guest on the radio talk show Mason and Guest, hosted by international cricket commentator Andrew Mason of Barbados. On the program, which is aired live on Real FM locally, Dr. Mitchell said most cricketing nations have changed the structure and operation of their boards, but the West Indies is holding fast to an old structure. Dr. Mitchell, an avid cricket fan who still plays the sport, said it is hard watching the demise and level of performance of West Indies cricket. It is humiliating to any Caribbean person. He also cited a need for a change in the leadership of the board. Responding to a question about the most recent dispute concerning the appointment of an interim coach, Dr. Mitchell said the attitude and arrogance displayed by some members of the board are detrimental to the sport. And finally, revenue generation from the tourism sector continues to climb as the Grenada Tourism Authority improves its destination tour packages. That's according to the Nautical Development Manager, Nikoyan Roberts. In the last quarter of 2018, the Grenada Tourism Authority completed three major training programs geared at improving customer service and experience. Close to 60 frontline personnel were trained in introductory Spanish, French, German and Italian. They learned basic greetings and other important phrases to assist in a smoother interaction with visitors who do not speak English. Robert says because of this investment in the personnel and the marketing strategy, Grenada can enjoy increased revenues from the sector. These cruise visitors, each one spends a little over 52 US dollars per day when they come into Grenada. Because we have done so much training in our craft sector, because we have worked and trained our tour operators, we see that these opportunities to increase the spend of the visiting cruise passenger are coming more and more to fruition. She is hopeful that more tours can be contracted as the island continues to welcome visitors to its shore. Our tour portfolio has increased. We have on offer close to 100 tours. Now the cruise lines, when we go out to negotiate business with them, they don't purchase all of the packages. However, we have seen, for example, from Princess Cruises, they, when they come into Grenada, their percentage of persons on tour is up to 25%. Our goal with Grenadian tourism businesses is to raise this percentage to 50%. 
we want to keep promoting Pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean. So when the passengers come and they book a cruise, they want to go to Grenada. And when they get to Grenada, they want to book a tour that will take them outside of the town of St. George's into the surrounding countryside so they can experience our waterfalls, our attractions, our agritourism estates, our spice plantations, our rum distilleries, our nutmeg processing plant, and every other unique treasure that Pure Grenada has to offer them. The Grenada Tourism Authority reports that in 2018, seven new tours were developed following a cruise guest experience consultancy. That story just ended the national report for today, Wednesday, January 16th, 2019. Let's recap the top story. Government provides clarity on public officers eligible for salary increase. On behalf of all those who made this newscast possible, I am Rakisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Greenleck is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Okie doke, folks. Uh, Mr. Bajinski, we're coming at you in just a wee bit. But first, um, I want to acknowledge and say good morning to Glenn and Fitzroy who have joined us online on Facebook. And uh, TF Richards here has uh, a comment. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure he actually completed what he was trying to say. But anyhow, he says... I hope that these computers are checked properly in terms of network security. He's referring to the computers that have just been donated to a number of schools here in Grenada. You heard that in the uh, National Report. And he says, remember, a technician in Trinidad unearthed a glitch in which the cameras, and that's all he's saying, uh, in which the cameras, whatever, Please be aware of China. There are no more free lunches. So says TF. Veronica Sandy says, I have a frightful feeling about China gifting so much to Grenada. Margaret Francis says, TF Richards, that is quite true. There have also been discoveries of spying objects and spyware in Chinese electronic products sent to other countries as well. My gosh, I was listening to that report and I was thinking, oh my gosh, perhaps I should ask China for a computer. I need a computer right now. I need. Um, oh boy, here's a name I haven't seen before. 
The first name is Enid. I don't have any difficulty pronouncing that. But the surname's kind of tough on me. It's J-A-L-A-L-I-F-A-R-A-H-A-N-I. -A -A Enid, don't mind if I just call, <laughs> just call you uh, Enid. I'm going to try and get Mr. Basinski to pronounce that for me in just a wee bit. Um, anyhow, Enid is saying, good morning. It's nice that China gives help to the badly needed schools. But can someone tell me what's the catch? No one gives nothing for free. So says Enid. All right. Pilgrims, let me say good morning to Mr. Bajinsky. How art thou, sir? Good morning. You good? Nice to be with you again. Before no, you... I... Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Before you go any further, one, I want you to pronounce that word for me, that name. And secondly, I want to... Sorry, sorry you got me lost beyond Jala. <laughs> I got him lost beyond Jala. Jala Lefarani, I think. Jala Lefarani. I don't know. I hope I'm, tr I'm pronouncing that properly. Anyhow, Mr. Bashinsky, you can bung away for as long as you want this morning. But I also want to give you a heads up that just before you go... Um, I know that you're a retired gentleman now, and I'm assuming that you've got more time on your hands than in the past, and that you're keeping abreast of things in this country. So I'm going to ask you for some possible updates in just a wee bit um, regarding certain things here in Grenada. Okay, so take it away. Okay, well, first of all, I am concerned about the cynicism expressed by the contributors to your page. You were just reading some comments. It is well established and it is on the record of Parliament that we are not in a position to bite the hand that feeds us. The problem is that we have no input into the menu, so we don't know what we're getting. The other point is with regard to the dangers of these computers is that I have no particular concern since we have been advised just recently that in keeping with the policy of management of the public service, the acting permanent secretary of education is now acting permanent secretary in the ministry of ICT, which is directly under the supervision of the prime minister, whom, as we know, is a statistician. So as far as computers are concerned, I think the matter is clearly well in hand. So you skeptics out there ought to reconsider your ill-informed positions. You must listen when the gentleman speaks. Matters are under control. Now, with regard to matters which are not under control, I think we can now accept that based on the bunting that we see sprouting over all of our roundabouts, creating distractions, that the celebrations in respect of the 45th anniversary of independence are well on the way. Questions have, however, been raised as to what it is that we are celebrating after 45 years. When last week we had the unnerving spectacle of officers of the court demonstrating in the registry yard regarding government's failure to meet its commitments to provide adequate facilities for the proper administration of justice. We have also heard, as I've said before, that the ambulatory requirements of the hospital have been met. The Honorable Minister of Health made this announcement, and one is left to conclude that if you need to go to the hospital, you need to be able to walk by yourself, unaided, the meaning of ambulatory. Ah. Then, then we have the situation with regard to the maintenance of law and order. And again, we know that the Minister of National Security is on top of this. Because we have, based on your national report, the unnerving, again, unnerving situation where an inmate I don't know if it's called an inmate, an individual on remand at, by the way, Her Majesty's prison. Not sure why Her Majesty has anything to do with it still. Um, but um, this fellow has escaped from remand. He 
apparently was on remand having been charged with housebreaking and burglary. And according to a report I saw in one of the newspapers, is a known rapist. But yet, he seems to be eluding capture by the law enforcement authorities. And they have concluded quite reasonably that he is receiving aid and support and sustenance from members of the community, presumably the community where he grew up. Um, there are ways to deal with it. And I'm surprised that we are not seeing the matter being dealt with more aggressively. Nevertheless, I know for a fact that the Royal Grenada Police Force is able to deal with matters aggressively, such as in sending three police vehicles loaded with armed officers to apprehend somebody who had an unpaid parking ticket up in Tivoli area. So it means that they are able to attend to soft targets with overwhelming force. Someone says they witnessed uh, a, a, an incident of bottle throwing around the, the St. George's Melville Street area. And tourists were in port filming the activity. Maybe they thought it was a movie. Um, one has to wonder. Since the Royal Grenada Police Force invited motorists to avoid St. George's when there were multiple cruise ships in port, one would have expected that at the very least there would have been an elevated police present. It's not just for Carnival. Carnival is very peaceful. But when you have people who are allowed to purchase alcohol and to engage in verbal altercations with the only vocabulary they know, which consists almost solely of obscenities, then the police should intervene before it gets to the stage of bottle throwing. Bottle throwing is not something you expect in town on a cruise ship day. I expect that at political rallies, or at carnival, or at some sort of public function when you pay large sums of US dollars to get artists from other parts of the region to encourage people to disrespect the police, disrespect the laws. But having said that, CARICOM has voted not to recognize the results of the last election in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. And Jamaica, there's a, a confusion taking place there because the opposition wants to find out why the government um, voted along with CARICOM. I am, I am advised that Grenada did not vote, not that they abstained, but that they weren't there but you could probably find out what happened. But while we did not vote, as I believe I've mentioned to you already, the president of our upper house of parliament was most present at the ceremony and was circulating photographs of himself in company of other well-known revolutionaries. Now, on the question of revolution, I see that certain intellectuals locally and regionally are inviting the submission of papers to celebrate the upcoming 40th anniversary of the Grenada Revolution. Now, as an academic pursuit, I have nothing against it, but I'm not entirely certain that it should be termed a celebration of what, after all, was the first coup d'etat in the English-speaking Caribbean, which led to, this, to the suspension of our constitution the repercussions of which are being felt up to now regarding the, what has been determined by various courts of law to be the illegal abolition of pension and gratuity rights for public servants. And 45 years ago, we celebrated our independence during the midst of a nationwide shutdown. Who is to say that this is not the manner in which we will observe it again? I done. You done.
That's a mouthful, Mr. Brzezinski. Um, I just want to digress to something you mentioned a little while ago. You were talking about that gentleman who was on the run, the, the prisoner who escaped. Yes. Uh, um, as I listened to that report, you know, something that, that caught my attention. The cops seem to know that the man is being harbored. Okay? Um, one would have thought that if, if you know that much, then why haven't you just gone, picked them up? Is that asking too much? Um, I'm not familiar with the operational standards of the Royal Grenada Police Force, other than to observe, as I said, that when they need to pick up somebody for an unpaid tra traffic ticket, they're able to mobilize three vehicles and uh, squads of armed police to fill them. You know, uh, I have always been very sympathetic to uh, the RGPF because I know that uh, they have a relatively small force and, you know, it can be said that they're, they're trying and they're doing their best they can. But uh, I think it was a couple of days ago I was talking about uh, an incident that happened um, to me downtown. You know, that, you know that crosswalk that runs from Digicel across Melville Street to the mall. Yes. Okay. I was crossing there, I think it was on Saturday. There are two officers in uniform, a male and a female, and the female had a couple of stripes on her shoulder. Okay. I am halfway across the sidewalk. There's no traffic coming. When I get halfway across the sidewalk, the, the crosswalk, sorry, Along comes a car at high speed from the tunnel. Totally ignores me. I came to a screeching halt, me and somebody else. These officers are standing on the other side of the, on the curb at the other side of the crosswalk. Totally oblivious, sir, to what had just happened. I could have been run over along with that uh, other gentleman who was uh, crossing the street at the time. And these cops are just standing there, you know. And people sometimes wonder why I speak about the inefficiency of the police force. Like I said, they're trying, they're trying. But stuff like that, there's other stuff that goes on around the bus terminal and you see cops standing there and they just don't know that something is going on. Wago. You see, you see, the issue is, and I have heard this before, that when the assistance of the police is solicited or requested, the response very often is, has a crime been committed? You see, because our lawyers are so skillful at at belittling the efforts of the police so that unless a crime has been committed and there are witnesses who are prepared to sign statements, the police appear reluctant to engage with these culprits. No, you and I both know, and so does Chester Humphrey, that there is noise, anti-noise pollution legislation. But the police seem unable to do anything because they are unaware as to what is the meaning of decibels or whether or not the pollution anti-pollution legislation has a particular decibel limit beyond which a crime is committed and none of them appear to have what what do you call the instrument that measures sound noise meters uh, a noise meter right but yet we hear about them, they want to have radar guns on the road to deal with speeding. There was an announcement about speeding. Last year there was an announcement about they'd be going after people driving and using their cell phones. But um, how many people have been charged? Then this is inspection season to, to get your vehicle inspected. The law is very clear. It says that a police officer must be able to see through the glass, whether it is the windscreen, the rear windscreen, the side windows. The police officer must be able to identify the driver. 
but you'll see vehicles driving around where the level of tint is almost 100% obscurity. You cannot see who's inside there. Pause there for a minute, sir. Pause there. One, you, let's start with the tint. I talked about this, I think it was last week. You know, there are people who meet you somewhere and say, well, hey, listen, I waved to you on, on Granby Street yesterday and didn't wave back to me. People driving by with these tinted windows. They don't realize that they can see you walking on the sidewalk, but because of the tint, you don't know who's in the car, so you can't wave. I don't just wave at every car that goes by. I mean, come on, I may be stupid, but I ain't that dumb. That's that's one. The other they'd thing probably they'd probably report you for behaving as though you were suffering a mental episode. Yeah. Yeah. Two, based on what you were saying a little while ago. It seems to me I should have allowed myself to be run over, and then I would have the attention of the cops because a crime has not been committed. Absolutely. They were waiting for something to happen. Oh, okay. Three, you mentioned the noise, sir, and the decibels. A.B., I've talked about this on the air ad infinitum, but I'm going to bring it up again because you just brought it up. A.B., I was one of the people, as the president of an organization called Citizens Against Noise, who worked for five years with the RGPF, the commissioner of police, the attorney general, and whoever. A bunch of us worked together to put this legislation in place. It's been in place for about 10 years. And I was told as recently as last year that nobody has been charged. That's one. The other part, the decibel part. A.B., when we put this legislation together, I suggested that we find out from other countries what decibel level is acceptable and what is not. And to do that, you're going to need to have uh, noise meters in place. Yeah. We, we offered, we offered, forget about offered, we bought, we bought noise meters for the RGPF. No, 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 no. We're going to use, oh, oh, shoots, what's the term they use? Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, a, a legal term they use um, where it's essentially leaving it to their discretion, whether it's a nuisance, mm -hmm. okay? A.B., them man serious about this thing. Them nope. man serious. So, so we're looking to celebrate the 45th anniversary of independence. Well, look. But some... for, those, for those people who are going to respond to the request for submission of papers, in celebration of the 40th anniversary of the coup d'etat on March 13th, I have sent you a link, which you are familiar with, to latinamericanstudies.org, which has all of the internal party documents of the NJM up to around about September the 20th of 1983, which gives a fairly detailed insight into the progress or lack thereof made from March 13, 1979 all the way through to the implosion. And it wasn't anything about imperialism. It was about the inability of the comrades to sell their fiction to the Grenadian masses. End of story. If you continue to lie to people, at some stage they will have had enough. And so, on that note, I also want to recommend Teddy Victor's book, Deception on Conception. Hugh O'Shaughnessy's book in 1985, I think it was, The Grenada Revolution. And, of course, the late Sir Paul Schoon Survival for Service, the part which deals with his interactions with the originators, perpetrators of the coup d'etat. I don't think there's any point in recommending we move at dawn because that is a self-serving whitewash of what took place. And um, we're still waiting to hear what the Privy Council has to say on that particular application. So I want to leave you with that because I do, in fact, have somewhere to go, George. A.B., 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 A.B. First of all, T.F. Richard says we're celebrating 45 years of dependence, not independence okay uh claire says prevention of crime is the most important issue 
not waiting for crime than to start looking for a solution. Why wait for something to happen? You can stop it now. And finally, Margaret says, George and Allen, even when the police try to enforce the noise regulations, government ministers override the police orders. So what's the point? And this ain't no dem say. This is from first-hand experience. Okay, B, I'm going to let you scoot. I'm uh, sorry to take up that much of your time, but listen, uh, thanks a lot. Enlightening as always. Thank you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay. AB is gone. There he is. Uh, <laughs> oh, folks, there's so much more we, we could have talked about. So much more. But I guess uh, we'll have to save that for another time. Now, I promise you at the top of the program, Let's talk about your holiday planning guide for, uh, or your holiday guide for, uh, for 2019. For those of you who may not yet be aware of the holidays we're going to be celebrating in uh, 2019, we've already had New Year's Day. Well, that's gone. Then February 1st, uh, February 7th, Independence Day, April 19th, Good Friday. April 22nd, Easter Monday. And what's May 1st? Labor Day. Then you have June 10th, which is the day on which we commemorate Whit Monday. June 20th, Corpus Christi. Hope you're making a note of all of these uh, dates, all right? Um, Corpus Christi, June 20th, August 5th, Emancipation Day, August 12th, and 13th, Carnival Monday and Tuesday. Well, I didn't even, uh, didn't even have to mention those to you. And then, October 25th, Thanksgiving Day. December 25th. Come on, come on. Yeah, because some of you have already started writing to Santa Claus, haven't you? Christmas Day. And uh, the final holiday for uh, this year, Boxing Day, December 26th. Veronica Sandy on Facebook says, very interesting as usual, Mr. A.B. Yeah, Veronica, the man never, never fails to hit a chord. Yeah, good stuff. Folks, uh, let me take another quick little break here, and we'll come back.
You know, there's a note here on Facebook from uh, Sharon. Sharon says, whoa. And with that, another year gone. Yeah, girl. Time zipping by. Already the 17th day of the year. And before you blink twice, it's gone. Um, Laurie Bridgman is joining us a little bit late. She uh, missed the play. No big deal, Laurie. Um, it's going to be up on uh, Facebook in just a few minutes, uh, maybe about five minutes or so after I say bye-bye. And uh, we're also going to have it up on YouTube a little bit later on. Now, there's also a note here, a parting note from T.F. Richards. He says, George, we are going to get back the holiday that KCM took from August, aren't we? He goes on to say, it will be called Liar's Day. Be mindful, it's quite different from April Fool's Day. <laughs> so says uh, T.F. Richards. Pilgrims. Ay, ay, ay. Margaret, uh, not Margaret, but uh, Sharon, you're talking about how fast time flies. Believe it or not, we're just about at the end of today's edition of Good Day Grenada. Be sure to join us this coming Sunday for another exciting edition of Sundays with George Grant. Spread the word around, too, that uh, we get together here every uh, weekday morning, 9 to... Uh, seems like most of the programs here begin at uh, 9 o'clock. Sunday morning, Sundays with George Grant starts at 9. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Good Day Grenada starts at 9. And speaking about programs, don't you dare forget, today, being Thursday, I am personally extending a cordial invitation to you to join us tonight. Every Thursday evening, we get together at 8 o'clock, right here, 8 o'clock sharp. For a couple of hours, regional hookup. You got Jerry in St. Vincent, Margaret out there in New York, Catherine in uh, London, and Beverly and me right here in the Grands. And who knows? Uh, I don't know. You may have people from other islands and other cities joining us as well. Bill Grimms, just before we go, as always, a parting word from the Holy Scriptures, one of my favorite psalms in the entire Bible. It's the 37th Psalm, and I've got three verses for you this morning. Seven, eight, and nine. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Keep that promise in heart, folks. Keep that promise. Psalm 37, 7, 8, and 9. On that note, let me see here. Georgie Porgy is uh, going to say thanks a lot for joining us. I do send you God's blessings. And by the way, see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. <laughs>